now with our good buddy Kevin Lockery. We get a chance every now and then. He's the Mad Dog Unleashed basketball uh, guru, and he's going to help us out on what we stand with these two series now, having played two games. Kev, welcome. How are you today, buddy? Okay? Okay, Chris. How are you doing today? Okay, listen. Uh, Houston will really show me something. They win a road game, so I'm not going to go too crazy. Let me see them win a game in Oakland. But they did play well last night. Let's give them credit. They dominated the game to get even a game of peace. Let me get a thought about that first before we get to the Boston-Cleveland series. Go ahead. Well, in the first two games, in Golden State played excellent defense. The first night, the defense was really poor the second night. It was just the opposite for Houston. They played terrible defense the first night and great defense the second night. I think that was the difference. You looked at Gordon and, and uh, Tucker had, uh, I think, 49 points last night. In the first game, they had a total of 16. Thompson had 28 the first game and 8 the last game. So it was just a turnaround, uh, the opposite. So each team played differently each night. And you still got to give uh, Golden State a little bit of an edge. They got three of the next five games at home. But if Houston, all season they played very good defense. The first game of the series, they weren't very good. If they same, play the same way, very physical, get after them, I think it'll be an excellent series. And we need a good series. The last round it was 4-1, 4-1, 4-1, 4-0. 4-1 we need to have a good series. You do. So you, 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 you think this is a, a significant win last night? Or you, like me, let me see Houston win a game in Golden State. They haven't lost a playoff game in two years in that building. Uh, don't you want to see that before we think that the Rockets are here to stay in this conference final? Oh, I agree with that. The only thing is if they do win a game on the road in the next two games, they would possibly have the seventh game at their, in their own building. That could be very, very interesting. That's what I like to see. Like I said, I like to see a real good series. But Houston has to prove it. I mean, they were like one or two point favorites at home against the uh, Golden State. They go up to Golden State, they'll be six or seven point underdogs. So people still think that it's going to be Golden State. But that was a very impressive win. I was more impressed. Everybody's talking about their offense. They moved the ball better. But I think it was on a defensive end that they really won that game. All right. Now, if you were a Steve Kerr, would you shake this game? Well, they've lost three playoff games already. Last year, they only lost one. Uh, would you shake this off and say, ah, you know what? We won our game. We're okay. Or would there be reason for concern after the first two games of this series? I think there's a lot of concern. The reason I'll say that is the way I don't say they quit in that game last night, but it was pretty close to it. And if it wasn't for Durant, they might have got beat by 35. Uh, he put on a great offensive show. But uh, I, I think there's a, there has to be some concern. You can't lose a game in the playoff like that. They looked like they were very content to go away one and one, and you can't have that attitude. And when they look at the film today, they'll be shocked how poor their defensive was. I think there were situations where they just people just drove down the middle, nobody touched them, and, and uh, they just played, played poorly. And you can't have that in, in uh, which everybody thinks this is going to be the championship series. So uh, I think there's some concern. Obviously, they're going to go back home and see what they can do in the next two games. All right. Now, would you still think Golden State's going to win? I do because they have three of the next five games at home. But I, don't, I, I thought it was going to be a five or six game series. But I think this game could go longer than people expected, at least six, I think. And uh, Golden, uh, Golden State is not as intent – all year, the way they played defensively. And the way they played defensively last night was a shock to me. And they are taking advantage of Curry a little bit on the offensive end, and they are beating him up physically. And I would say in the two games, he's been knocked to the floor about ten times. And that's the way they're going to play him. And that wears him down a little bit, and he is prone to getting injured. So I look for that, that to be a factor in the series also. I- you know, you can make an argument, Kev. I know this is going to be uh, heresy to some people. You can make an argument he's a little overrated. Um, he has, you know, he did, when they won the championship, uh, uh, Iguodala, he did not play well. Iguodala was the MVP. The year they lost, uh, obviously they were comp- he was completely outplayed by Irving. Last year was a Durant deal. He won game three with that jumper. It was, it, it, and this year, you know, he's hurt a lot, as you said, and he gets destroyed defensively. Could you make an argument? Could you make an argument as a ba- as a basketball fan? Now I know he's a wonderful shooter and he's a, he's an acrobat with the ball. I get it, but could you make an argument that he's a little overrated as a player? 
Well, I think you might be say that in the playoff situation, but for someone someone who's been MVP twice in the NBA, when well, he's played maybe six or seven years, I don't know how long he's played now, but for him to be MVP for two years, that's pretty impressive. I think the biggest fact that he's not physically strong, and in the NBA playoffs, the physicality raises about 40%, and the referees let him play. Much, it's much more physical, and I think that bothers him. He he made maybe one three point shot last night, and I think you know after you get beat up a little bit, it wears you down a little bit, in particular in your legs. I think that bothers his jump shot. They got plenty of time off now, and that should help him. All right, now uh, last thing, and we'll go to Boston. Uh, psychologically, the way Houston won last night. You think there's any carryover positively for the Rockets or negatively for the Warriors, or it's no big deal either way? Well, I think it's a positive for Houston. When they came into this series, they felt that they could beat them. They could beat Golden State. And then they played poorly in the first game. That was obviously a must game for them last night. And they came back really strong. I mean, that was a very impressive win. That just wasn't just a mediocre win. They blew them out. So now their confidence is back as a team. And, uh, you know, they got to go on. You know, Harden didn't play great last night. He played all right. But the team played great. Uh, they moved the ball a little bit better. But I, that's not their style. But their defense was good. So that gives them back. They get back to feeling that, hey, we can beat these guys. They're all in the locker room right now and said, we're just going to throw away the first game. Maybe we weren't ready. Maybe we had too long of a layoff. So their confidence is back. And if you don't have confidence as a team, that's a big difference, and I think that's what the Cavaliers lack. They have no confidence as a team right now. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, 50-50 that they win a game in Oakland or less than that? Yeah, 50-50. I'll give them 50-50. I'll give them that. And uh, I, I would say that if, if Golden State doesn't raise their defense back to where they were in the past, I think Houston has a shot. I still will take Golden State. I mean – they have great, great players. And Durant is something special. Oh, he is great. I mean, he is an unbelievable basketball player. He's a seven-footer playing like a, a point guard. He can do anything. So he's one of the top three players in the NBA. Curry, Thompson, Green, that's a pretty good group. But uh, they got to play defense in the playoffs is, par- is paramount. They have to play much better defense. All right, good job there. All right, let's do Cleveland and uh, and the Celtics. I, I was actually surprised, Kevin, and this is the odds. Uh, you know, Boston has not gotten a lot of respect from Vegas. I mean, they were underdogs against Philly. They were even an underdog against Philly after they won game one. They were a huge underdog in this series despite having home court. They were plus 235. I'm sure you know what that means. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, from from a, from a series price standpoint, even after they won game one, they were still a plus. I mean, I mean, geez. I mean, Horford's very good. Brown's great. Rogier has found himself, and everybody loves Tatum, and he's a great coach. I'm actually surprised that Boston has gotten such little respect from the betting public. What's your take on that first? I'm totally surprised, Chris. I mean, first of all, we got, they got a great coach. Steven's a terrific coach, maybe the best in the NBA. But let's look at their lineup. You got, you got Horford, you got Brown, you got Tatum, you got Morris, you got Rozier. They come in with Baines, and they come in with Smart. That's basically the seven that play. That's the most physical, toughest outfit in the NBA. They are terrifically aggressive in every single play. And when you look against Cleveland, if you watched the game the other night, I don't think anybody but LeBron ever drove into the lane and scored a basket. Everybody else was in the perimeter. With Boston, every one of them that I can think of that game, maybe even Hoffman one time did, every one of them drove to the basket and got easy layups. The the, uh, Cavaliers have really very few players that can break down anybody on the the defensive end, and that's a big difference in the series. And I think Boston will win this series. I really do. I don't think – and first of all, we're not giving enough credit for the talent that Boston has. These are really good players. Forget about being young. They are – I mean – Brown and Tatum have some stardom in them. These kids, these kids are going to be terrific players in the NBA for years. I mean, give them some credit. Rozier this is the guy that surprised me the most. I didn't know he was this good a player, and he's basically playing a point guard. But they can take it to the hoop. Cavaliers have one guy that can take it to the hoop, and LeBron. And I think after LeBron got hit in the head the other night, 
I think that affected his game in the second in the second half. Yeah, that was a huge topic for me yesterday, Kev. Let's do that. Uh, you know, that is the difference between LeBron. Kobe and Jordan, and we all know that LeBron's an all-time great and maybe the second best player of all time, but that is the difference between Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. LeBron looked a little dejected in that second half. You know, he, he kind of got passive. He's done this before. We've seen it before against Boston a long time ago, against Dallas. He gets a little, de- he looked dejected and a little, you know, down in the dumps. And when that game turned, it's almost like he felt it was inevitable and there wasn't much he can do about it. Now, Jordan wouldn't do it that way. You coached him, you know. And although I don't love Kobe, he's a volume shooter, he wouldn't do that either. But LeBron did. Now, you want to chalk it up to getting banged in the head on Tatum? All right, maybe a little something there. But he does have a tendency to have a hangdog look in certain cases. What's your take on that? Well, the big difference from the past is Kyrie Irving. He could handle the situation for him. Hale had one point in that game. Smith had no points. I mean, he has to take charge of the whole game and play in the point guard. When they had Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving can go get you a basket. He could take, he could break down a defense. They have absolutely nobody on that team that can break down a defense except LeBron. And it's tough. One man's not going to beat the, the Boston squad. I don't think they can beat Boston. I really don't. And uh, you know, you get you get crazy in games like when Cavaliers. I mean, when Golden State won the first game, everybody's saying the series is over. So you you forget that it's a seven game series sometime. But Boston can break you down defensively, and they only have LeBron. LeBron's the only guy who can take the ball to the basket and get by anybody. And, you know, the point guard of Hill is very, very inconsistent. So I, I think it's a situation that I honestly think the best talent in the floor is Boston Celtics. Uh, I agree. Now, they are 1-4 on the road, and the game that they won, Philadelphia handed it to them. So they are a lot better in that building than they are in Cleveland. How will they play these next two games in Ohio? What you taking? Oh, exactly right. And if you look back to the Philadelphia series, they're down down four with about a minute and a half to go, and Reddick's got a wide-open three-point shot, and he hits it off the front rim. If he makes that shot, Boston's not even in the playoffs right now. So anything can happen. I mean, and you got LeBron as a super player. They have the Love had a great game last game. Yeah, he, he did. Played really he played well. well. He, he did. He really played, played well. well. But no one else in that team played well. And they have to have some, some more support. If Smith's going to go for seven and Hill's going to get one point, they can't pass, possibly beat the Celtics. All right, now you gave Houston a fifty-fifty chance to win a game in Golden State. Does Cleveland have a fifty-fifty chance to win both, or a little better than that here in these next two? I think they can win both. But the situation is, if they have to go into the seventh game if it gets that far in Boston, and everybody's healthy. Assume the team, everybody's equal right now, health-wise. I don't think they'd beat Boston in the seventh game. Would you rather have in that spot, would you rather have the game at home if you were coaching, or would you rather have the best player? I'd rather have it at home because, again, we're not giving enough credit to the talent that Boston has. You know, you're talking about go go spot to spot in these teams. We know LeBron's the best. They go spot to spot after that. I think that the Celtics match up better. Yeah, I agree. And then in almost every spot, because for me, the surprise is Rozier. I know Tatum was good. I know Brown was good. Horford's an excellent basketball player, but I really didn't think Rozier was this good. Uh, and I he agree. makes a major difference. Basically, what you're telling me is then, if for Cleveland to win this series, they're going to win four straight. Yeah, I think they'd have to win four. I don't think they can win four straight. I really don't think they can beat them four straight. Uh, I'd be surprised if they do. Uh, but, you know, the great play in LeBron, but he's, he's going to get his points. So he's got to have help. you got to have help. Love gave him some help, but no one else on that team. Uh, Thompson played fairly well. But their, their guard core, if you want to go Smith, a wing player, but you look at the talent. How who's going to break down defensively? Oh, no, I know, agree. It's a major Boston. problem. I mean, there's, Boston's in a great zone defense after the first pass, and, and no one can get to the hoop but LeBron. And they need help. They definitely need help. And I don't think he's going to get enough help. All right. Well, you know, I praise him almost too much. Does he deserve it? How good is you coached? How good is Stevens? I think he's the best coach of the NBA. I really do. If you ever hear any of his players interviewed. Oh, they they mention him, him every single time. Every single time. Every single time they mention him. No, no, very few players will mention their co- coach in an interview. 
they believe in this guy. And, he, and you know, he's a very meek-looking guy, and he seems like he's – I don't know him very well, but they play hard. I mean, he, he, he's got them playing. They, they bought into the system, and that's really nice to see. Uh, did, how about plays and the out-of-bounds stuff? Everybody says he's great with these out-of-bounds plays. Do you he, notice he's that? He's terrific defensively out-of-bounds. Most teams – defensively out of bounds when the ball's on the side will just give the other team a chance to get the ball in bounds and set up the defense. He denies the ball in bounds. He beat Philadelphia that way. Two big plays in that game. Yes, he did. The last game. He, yeah. did it la- he did it last night. Uh, I mean, last game against, uh, against Cleveland twice on side out of bounds. These little things help. Jump balls. They're always really prepared to steal the jump ball. They're a very, very well-coached team. They are. All right. right now, who's in the final? Boston against who? I think Boston against Cavaliers, but I tell you, if if they get, I mean, Boston against uh, Golden State. But let me tell you, if that happens, Green will have about ten fights. <laughs> you have to have, you're going to have to have a ring in there to have court because well, he's going to be playing against the most physical team, and they will be banging. Now, will Boston be competitive in that series? If they, I play? think so. I really, I don't think they'll beat them. I mean, you have to give credit to the champions. But uh, I think Boston will be, will be compet- I think Boston will be competitive against anybody they play it against in the NBA, assuming they don't get any injuries, because they're basically playing seven players. How do they get? You know, they're going to have to trade Rozier, are they not? I mean, they're going to have Irving on the team next year. You don't have room for him, so Rozier is going to have to go. Is this correct? Uh, it'd be hard to get rid of him. I really think uh, he's a surprise to me. He's been a surprise to me at the playoffs. Not that he's the best player. He's in the not going to play. Kevin, he's not going to play though. Where's he going to play? <laughs> It's going to be tough. How about Haywood? <laughs> How about the Brown and, and Tatum? Is Haywood going to take one of their spots? Is he going to play two guard? <laughs> it's a lot of talent. It's a, and if, what would you trade? What would you trade? What would you trade Rozier for? Well, they, I mean, you're I would get a keep, better player than him. I would keep Marcus Smart because he's a free agent. And I yeah. trade Rozier. And then I got Irving and Haywood and Marcus Smart in the backcourt with Tatum, Brown, and Horford. That's the way I would do it. No. That's a pretty good lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, one word on, uh, quickly, one word on uh, d- poor Dwayne Casey. What's your take on that? I think he got a bad deal. I mean, what, he got, what happened, though, in that series, we know that he, he got swept and that didn't look good. And also when he put the Rosen on the bench for 14 straight minutes, if that didn't work, that was going to be trouble. I don't know the situation between he and the coach, but Casey took the shot at it. Casey will be, he'll get another job. He might get one of the jobs that is still open in the NBA because he, if you're going to be a chance to be coach of the year uh, and, win, and win the most games in the East, there's a lot of people who like to have him as the coach of the team, and I think he got the raw deal. But, you know, they have to do, they had to do something. Either they're going to break up the team or fire the coach, and you know what happens. Yeah, all the time. Kev, we'll talk to you before the finals or if there's a game seven. Always a pleasure, pal. Thanks so much. My pleasure, man. Chris. Take care. Kev, you got it. Kevin Lockley does a super job every time. Seven in front of the arrow. We continue here on Mad Dog Unleashed.